Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, my talk is about the, sorry, the uncertainty quantification for wave field re reconstruction inversion. It's a, uh, a work with my colleague, Chair Ying Lee, Kurt Darcyewa, Felix, and uh, Rachel. So, I think the reason that my talk is in this session is because for conventional FWI, if you want to do the uncertainty quantification, it's the com computational cost will be hu very, very huge. But in this talk, we will show that in the framework of the wave field reconstruction inversion, how we can decrease the computational cost and, uh, make, the, and uh, make the uncertainty quantification, quantification computationally in, uh, tractable. Okay, so the motivation of this work is that we all know that uh, we, we can get the data from the model and uh, the inversion, the objective of the inversion is that we want to use the data to invert the model out. But we, in practice, we know there's a noise on the, the uncertainty in the data. So the, so the inversion result you get should also contain some, some uncertainties inside. So we just want to link the distribution of the data to the distribution of the model and give some error buff for the inversion results. And uh, comparing, following uh, Felix's talk, comparing with the traditional FWI and the WI, the WI have these two advantages. One is it's less nonlinear than the conventional FWI because it's kindly bilinearly, right? And uh, it has a approximately diagonal Hessian, which the traditional FWI's Gauss Newton Hessian or Hessian is very dense and uh, very difficult to calculate it or evaluate. So that's the mo uh, basic motivation that we want to use the WI to do the uncertainty quantification. And if you compare the Gauss Newton Hessian of the traditional FWI and uh, the WI, you can see we can easily get a diagonal part of the Hessian from the WI, which will be very useful for our, when, when we do the uncertainty quantification. And for tra traditional uh, FWI, even getting, get out some diagonal part is also very expensive. Okay, so the goal of this, this, this project is that we want to set up a reasonable distribution for the model given the observed data. And we want to derive a practical method to calculate or estimate the, the distribution. And we want to uh, do get some statistic parameters and uh, to get some, um, quantify some uncertainties based on this distribution. So first, uh, let's still re revisit the deterministic case for the traditional four waveform inversion. So the traditional four waveform inversion, you, we can write, write it as a PD constraint optimization problem, which we are trying to minimize the, the data misstate subject to the PD functions with the user wave field Q the source and D the observed data and P the receiver projection, pro pro projection operators. Okay. So, uh, what a wave field reconstruction inversion did is that it, it doesn't just uh, minimize the observed data, uh, uh, the data, the, the data misfit, but it also minimizes the PD misfit. So actually, it relaxes the PD constraint, but put, put it into the object function, and uh, we can use a variable projection method to to deal the uh, to deal these optimization problems. And uh, because the WI, uh, we both search in the model domain, the wave field domain, actually it can mm, help us to reduce the, the probability to get into the local minima. Yes, and it's, e and yeah. And uh, another good thing for WI is that if your data has a noise, actually the wave field can help you to do some denoise. I, I will show with this simple test, like uh, very simple layers models. So 
we, the red one is the noise free data, and we add the noise on the, data, uh, on the red one. And we can by select the lambda to, to get, uh, to, get uh, to shortly uh, do the denoise. So this one is the uh, uh, data you get from solving the harmful equation. So you can see it doesn't fit uh, any data. But if, if we use a WRI, then we can see that we can fit the noise-free data and uh, so the data in the blue one is quite fit the red one. Even though your, your input data is uh, no with noise, you can still uh, get, uh, reconstruct the noise-free data. So it can help us to reduce the uncertainty. Okay, then um, let's go to the statistic form. So basically, the traditional after by you can write the statistic statistical form in the from the Bayesian inference. So you actually has a likelihood term and uh, the prior term, right? But in in WI we actually add the add the PD misfit term also in, into the likelihood term to help us to uh, to reduce the uncertainty. So we want the posterior distribution we want is the M, so actually we need to integrate for the U to get to the posterior distribution of, of the M. And uh, because once you fix, fix M, for U it's just a Gaussian distribution and you can have the analytic solution of the integra integrations. So you can get something like this. And actually the U bar is still solving a Augmented systems, and but here you have the determinist term, which is very difficult to compute. So we need to do some approximations. What we do is that we assume we assume that for for all m, this term is kindly can be a uh, constant. So we use this posterior distribution to to approximate the, the true marginal distribution of the M. So this is a 2D case that will show how this ap uh, ap approximation works. Basically, you want to get the marginal distribution by integrate uh, along the U, U direction. And, but actually, actually uh, when you, uh, when you, your model is a little bit uh, different, uh, a, li a little bit different from the, get, get away from the maximum point. Actually, the distribution will decay very fast. So you can also, you can also just use the, the curve at the, for each U at the maximum uh, distribution point to approximate the marginal distribution because actually the, the most distribution is centered on the on, on this area. So that's the approximation that we make. And uh, we will use that approximation method posterior distribution to quantify the our uncertainty. So we have the posterior distribution, then we need to find a way to to analyze the uncertainty based on that di distribution. One simple solution is that you can in Integrate the posterior distribution and get whatever you want, but it's it's also very computational. The comp the computational cost is also very huge. And uh, another way is that you can use the MCMC method to sample the posterior distribu the distribution. But MC MCMC method you need to generate a bunch of a large number of the samples, and uh, each samples you still need to calculate the misfit function, which also relate to the PD is over. So it's also a very expensive method. So yes, th this is a, this is a, a Newton type MCMC method, which is uh, uh, pre presented by the um, James Martins. The, they are at the, the U UT Austin. So they will use the local hashing information and graded information to get a proposal distribution to do the MCMC stuff.
but it's still very expensive because they need the they need to do the low rank approximation of the hexagon for each samples, which relate to a quite a, a very large number of PD solvers. Yeah, and uh, actually the low rank approximation of the hexagon is not quite suitable for the seismic exploration. So, yeah, the, their method is they they they. They for their work is for the global seismic, so they 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 can have the low rank approximation, but in our field, it may not be true. So we don't we don't want to use the MCMS MCM method because we we don't want to solve a bunch of PD so PDs. So what we do is that so we just box, box, use an approximated distribution to quantify the uncertainty. So basically, the idea is that we're trying to get a, a quadratic approximation around the uh, around the maximum posterior point, and uh, if it, if this approximation is is quite a good approximation, then we can just use this this uh, this, uh, this function to approximate the original one and uh, get reasonable result. So. In order to get this, we need the hashing information and the gradient information. So for, for the traditional, traditional FWA, we have mentioned before that the, the hashing is very dense and uh, very difficult to calculate, right? And uh, it's, it's dense. And uh, each, in order to um, get the, the full hash out, it, you need to like maybe millions of PD solvers, which is uh, something that we cannot do. But for the WI, you can get the, uh, the uh, approximate diagonal hashing, just uh, um, with no additional PD uh, cost once you generate the wave field. So this is a good thing for us to when we do the uncertainty quantification in this here. So th this figure is that we're trying to show that actually the approximation at the MAP, the quadratic approximation at the MAP is quite a good approximation to the original func misfit function. So basically we select three, uh, these three figures is uh, three different directions around the MAP point and uh, uh, we calculate the misfit function along the Along the, uh, the the directions, and uh, the blue one is the quadratic approximation, and the green one is the or the red one is the true is a true misfit. So we can see around our, uh, around the MAP. So the quadratic op approximation is still quite nice, which means uh, it's a it's something that we can use to approximate the the behavior of the misfit at uh, around the MAP. So, yeah, this is our goal, our method to approximate, the, to quantify the, the uncertainty for the WI, is that we quantify the uncertainty by estimating the diagonal part of the inverse of the Hessians. So, this figure shows the uh, Diagonal approximation and uh, the diagonal part of the two hashings, the comparison of these two. So actually, we because this uh, we we are testing on very small models, so we can actually generate the true the true hashings, and we can take out the two the diagonal part of the true hashings, and uh, then we compare it with the uh, the diagonal approximation we get from the previous previous site, and uh, we can see there. Are there's some difference, but in general, they are kindly similar, right? And uh, if we use this diagonal approximation to generate the random samples and uh, compare it with the uh, random samples that we generate by using the true Hessians, we can get this two one. So this one is uh, random samples that, uh, that we generate with the uh, Diagonal approximation, and uh, this one is the uh, random samples that we generate with the two hashings. So we can see that 
they are quite similar, right? <laughs> and if, if oh, I, I think it's, it's quite similar mm, at the amplitude. And uh, if, if, you generate, if you generate a bunch of number of the, this kind of samples, the behavior of this, these two should be very, very close to each other. So this is a workflow for our uncertainty quantification. So we first solve the deterministic WI problem to obtain the MAP es estimate. Then we co co compute the Hessian at the MAP estimate and generate the Gauss uh, approximate the Gaussian distribution around this point. And then we quantify the uncertainty of, of the model based on these this Gaussian distributions. And uh, because we use the diagonal approximated Hessians, so there's no additional PD solvers needed in these work workflows, which means you can, which means it's a computational checkable method for us to get some, get some understanding of the uncertainty of our inversion result. So let's see some numerical experiments. Uh, still based on, this, this one is a very simple problem that has uh, four layers and uh, the model size 500 meters times 2,000 meters. And uh, the source and the receiver location are, are on, on the surface. And uh, we set the standard deviation of the data is uh, 0.5 and standard deviation of PD is 0.5. And we use the frequency like from 10 to 30 hertz. And uh, this is a uh, result of the MAP and this is the result of, of the standard deviation. So we can see in the deep part, it has uh, bigger, bigger uh, uh, standard deviations. That makes sense because you, at the deep, deep part, you, you have less sensitive than the sh shallow part, especially at the boundary part, the, the uncertainty is, is bigger than the other part. It also makes sense because the sensitive it's, uh, the data is less sensitive to the velocity change at the boundaries. Like what, what, that's what we expected. And uh, if we take three points and uh, to see the distribution of the, uh, the, uh, the distri distribution of that at the, this three point, we can see that actually our prior distribution is just a very bad distributions. It doesn't focus on anything. And, uh, but after the inversion, we actually make the dis posterior distribution mm, centered on the, on the true values. And uh, actually we, we reduce the uncertainties, right? By actually the distribution is shrink and the uncertainties is get, get less. And uh, we also calculate the confidence interval for, for the velocity at these three different uh, horizontal positions. So the black one is the MAP that we get, and uh, the, green, uh, the, the blue one is the initial models, and uh, the green one is the true models. And uh, this gray, back, gray background is the, answer, uh, is the confidence interval that we get. And uh, we, in order to see whether the confidence interval makes sense, we actually generate uh, five different realization of the data with our, we added the, the noise uh, from the, the noise distribution from and uh, add it onto the, onto, onto the noise-free data, and we do the inversion from these five different uh, data set and to see whether the inversion result is stay in the confidence interval. So this is the result. So we can see all the, all the five, five different results is lying in our confidence intervals which means that the confidence interval that we get is makes sense. And uh, we tested on the BG compass models, which is uh, a little bit complex models. 
and uh, the frequency from 5 to 31 hertz. And uh, we, we have 91 shot and uh, 451 receivers along at the okay, uh, at, at the surface. So I will go, go very, very, very quickly. So this is the MAP we get, and uh, this is the standard deviation we get. So we, we can still find that the boundary and at the, at the deep part, it has uh, bigger standard deviations and uh, bigger uncertainties. And uh, if we look at the confidence interval, we so still this, this is a confidence interval and the uh, black one is uh, two one and black one is uh, MAP and uh, another one is uh, two two models so we still generate five di uh, five different noise uh, data with noise and uh, do the inversion and uh, we can still see that the five different results are still lying on the in the confidence interval that we get and. Uh, if we look at the posterior distributions, we can also see that we actually reduce the uncertainties from the posterior di distribution has the less uncertainty than the prior distributions. Yeah, the summary is that we can approximate the marginal distribution in a computationally feasible manner. No extra PDE servers are required. And the approximate diagonal hashing is a good approximation of the true hashing to quantify the uncertainties. And the result of Inverting noise data still lie in the confidence interval, which gives us the confidence in our confidence intervals. <laughs> thank you for your attention, and thank you for all our sponsors. <laughs>